You know that feeling when you walk into your home, take a deep breath, and feel new? Well, that's what it's like to use Clorox Sentiva. Because Clorox Sentiva smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy. It'll elevate any cleaning routine to not just clean, but also make every room smell like a tropical coconut getaway. Discover how Clorox Sentiva's powerful clean and refreshing scents can transform your space. Get yours in coconut or other fabulous scents at a nearby retail store. When it comes to getting you back on the road of life, Alpha is there by your side when you need us most, handling your claims quickly. Because now is better than soon, and paid is better than pending. We make sure everything's taken care of, so you can get back to what matters most. That's life with Alpha Insurance. Visit alphainsurance.com to learn more. Kroger brand products have the great taste you'll celebrate. That's why over 40 million people choose Kroger brand products, making them a true crowd pleaser. And with quality guaranteed, you'll love your choice or get your money back. Score Kroger brand products with savings you can cheer for and great taste you can't resist. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Senora Sex Ed is not your mommy's sex talk. This show is La Platica like you've never heard it before. We're breaking the stigma and silence around sex and sexuality in Latinx communities. This podcast is an intergenerational conversation between Latinas from Gen X to Gen Z. We're your hosts, Diosa and Mala. You might recognize us from our first show, Locatora Radio. Listen to Senora Sex Ed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everyone. It's me, Katie Couric. You know, lately I've been overwhelmed by the whole wellness industry. So much information out there about flaxseed, pelvic floor, serums, and anti-aging. So I launched a newsletter. It's called Body and Soul to share expert-approved advice for your physical and mental health. And guess what? It's free. Just sign up at katiecouric.com slash bodyandsoul. That's K-A-T-I-E-C-O-U-R-I-C dot com slash body and soul. I promise it will make you happier and healthier. Episode 444 is episode 237. Try this Japanese art of mindful budgeting. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, simplicity, and live a richer life. life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about a new way to budget that is really an old way, and it's not even the first time we've talked about it. Uh, because this is a rerun of one of our most popular episodes from several years ago about kakebo, which is the Japanese art of mindful budgeting. There is a lot of Japanese concepts that we have enjoyed and taken a hold of even since this episode yes. was recorded. You'd have to get our book to find out what we're talking about, <laughs> Buy What You Love, without going broke at buywhatyoulovebook.com. Uh, but this one's a really good one. And I think you'll hear us describe some of why we think this is so good mm -hmm. at the beginning and, and throughout the episode. But I think anytime we can find uh, another method or even just mindset around how we approach our finances and manage our finances, well, it, it can be the key mm -hmm. that kind of unlocks it for us, right? Like not every exercise program is right for us. Not every diet is right for us. Not every budgeting practice is right for us. And this may not be exactly your thing either, but we like to kind of give a sampling of different things to be trying to find what's going to work for you that's going to create longevity long term. Yeah. And something I've been talking a lot about recently is the power of language. Mm -hmm. How if there is a word that triggers you, that makes you feel a certain type of way, there's usually another word that you can use in its place that means the exact same thing. 
uh, that has less baggage mm-hmm. attached to it. Mm-hmm. Or you may have to go to another language. <laughs> But there is always something that you can do a little differently, say a little differently, that is basically an identical practice. Um, But there are some unique things about Kakebo that you you will have heard us talk about in spending plans and budgets, but that is really honed in in this uh, this way, the style of budgeting. But first, this episode is brought to you by trying new things. Mm. Sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's scary, like shark cage diving or eating crickets. But if you want to try something new that isn't scary, get the friend letter. It's an email that we send every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three times a week. We're in your inbox with the scoop on what's for free that week, ways that you can save money on the stuff that you're already buying and helpful mindset hacks and journaling prompts for getting better at spending money. If you are not signed up for the friend letter, get it for free, frugalfriendspodcast.com. And if you already have the friend letter, refer your friends. There's a special unique link at the bottom of the emails that you receive that you can send to your friends. And the more friends you get to sign up, the more goodies we send to your actual mailbox, not yes. your inbox. You can get tangible goodies from us for doing that. So frugalfriendspodcast.com or the bottom of your email if you already get it. Yes, we love things, especially when they're free. It's just fun. It's not at all scary. No. Okay, so if you love budgeting or if you hate budgeting and you're trying to be more mindful of what you are spending then I would recommend you get our book, Buy What You Love Without Going Broke at buywhatyoulovebook.com. But after you pre-order it, I will wait. Thank you. After you pre-order it, it won't come till January. So in the meantime, there are a few other episodes that you can queue up for after this. Episode 349, How to Budget Without Deprivation. And episode 322, What is Values-Based Spending? And how do you practice it? So those are good primers for what you're going to get in January. But we will replay this episode. It has aged so well, except for my pronunciation of it. Mm. Um, ignore that. But it's a fantastic method. We to still adopt. have not learned. We Japanese. still have not learned. Nope. <laughs> and uh, concepts. even to try for a week would be very useful. So enjoy. Let's do it. I'm really excited to talk about this kind of in an older way, but still very relevant. And we know what that means. It's timeless and it Mm. works. And there's many principles and tenets in here that we can take and certainly make it work for us. But I love it when these older ways, these kind of ancient pathways resurface because I think there's something really rich in the method for it to have that degree of longevity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's dive into our first article, which really explains the philosophies and the questions behind Kakibo because it is, it's mindful budgeting. It's like what we say, I mean, all the... (laughs) It's it's basically like everything we've said, just like repackaged in a different way. And and so I'll just let it speak for itself. Um, but it's from Shondaland. It's called The Art of Kakibo. This Japanese budgeting system could change your financial life. And so this is your first time hearing about Kakibo, Jill. What mm-hmm. are your thoughts on this article specifically? It's fantastic. I mean, certainly I'm really excited about this method, but the article I think is really helpful. It's quite a long article, so we're not going to obviously read off the whole thing to you all or picking out the highlights from it, but I do think that the introduction they give and the background Mm -hmm. is really insightful. So just a Mm -hmm. few things before we get into kind of the questions and the categories and that kind of a thing. As you mentioned, Jen, they highlight that this was a form of budgeting that was developed in 1904 by a female journalist. I hope I don't get her name wrong. Hani Motoko. Okay. You can check me on that. But 
And then they go on to talk about how budgets are can feel like diets for our wallet. And I think this is always the same conversation that we come back to when budgeting gets difficult or when we experience pushback on a budget is when it's this concept of it feels like a diet. They're not fun. They mean a lot of restriction and denial and, and results are somewhere far off in the future. It's, I can't get it now. And then I love what they say here where they say... And budgets can make people super cranky. Uh, I don't know if that's you if you're, or your experience or the experience you have with a partner. Um, but sometimes if, if we approach a budget like a diet, that's why it can be really difficult. And so I think this system of budgeting presents a different mindset, a different approach, which is what we talk about all the time. So I'm so thrilled to see this be supported with... Um, an older way of going about this. And so I, I also like how they describe Kakibo being really elegant and straightforward, and it pairs mindfulness practices to the process of spending and in turn budgeting, but making a big focus on the spending and an awareness of the behaviors rather than the restrictions and the denial and the parts that make us cranky. <laughs> Yeah, I was reading somewhere actually where this is more of a philosophy, like shifting our perspective on how do I save more or how do I save and a shift uh, of this perspective to how do I spend, Mm -hmm. which is literally all we're trying to do is to shift your mind away from how do I save, which is obviously going to take you down a path of uh, restriction and unsustainable methods because there are a million things, uh, ways to save. Uh, there are over 200 in our free ebook called Modern Frugal Living. You can get it at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash ebook for nice free. plug. Yeah, thank you. But it is free. Uh, so there are so many ways to save. It can get mm-hmm. overwhelming and it's how we quote unquote fail or fall off the wagon or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But when you shift your mindset to how to spend, how how do I spend? Then you can get intentional about every every dollar you spend and you can feel good about it. And then you naturally save more because you are deciding to not spend money on things you don't care about and you are spending confidently on the things you do. And it doesn't always work out the first month because frankly, you don't always know what you care about the first month. You think you care about everything. Um, And as time goes on, you get better at learning who you are and what you want and what you care about and what you don't care about so that it is a sustainable way to live life and results in more saving. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I really love about what's at the heart of this quote unquote like budgeting method. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kikibo, it translates to household family ledger. So I love that terminology too. I feel like you could use ledger instead of budget and get the same result without as much of the mental muck that budget kind of like puts forward. But like, again, it was created by... um, a female journalist in Japan for housewives. And she was really like a um, an advocate for Japanese housewives to be conscious of their spending and start saving for their families and to be in charge of the family finances. And I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. And she, she founded a magazine for housewives. Um, and this was just like one of the things she put in there as like a simple way for women to manage their household finances. Mm, I love it. I love all of those words combined. Household, family, ledger. I mean, first of all, we all know what a ledger is, but it's not a common word within Mm -hmm. our English language. And yeah, it does kind of come without all of the preconceived notions to it. It's just a thing. It's a ledger versus all the all the preconceived ideas that comes with the word budgeting. Mm -hmm. And then pairing both household and family that it's what's needed and necessary for the house, but that there's a collective unit engaged in this as well. I just it's so beautiful. I, I'm really vibing on a lot of oh, yeah. what's being talked about here. 
Yeah, we are feeling strong vibes. And one of the reasons it's seeing a resurgence is is because of all the technology that has become available in the financial sector, which is awesome. Like tech, fintech, um, financial technology has made investing so much easier. It's made making money, earning a living like on the internet so much easier. It's it's done all these amazing things, but it's also allowed marketers and businesses to market to you and have you spend money without all the friction of buying in store or parting with your cash or seeing what is like without balancing your checkbook like your grandma used to do, you know? So there, while technology has has blessed us in so many ways, it's also taken a lot of the relationship away from how we spend money. Mm -hmm. And the goal of Kakibo is to reconnect you to your relationship with spending. And so spending is a lot of what we're going to be talking about with the Kakibo method. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's uh, let's get yeah. into how to execute it. So since the process does predate smartphones and computers, it does rely on that good old fashioned pen and paper, the sponsor of today's episode, yes. go figure. And so one of the first steps with Kakibo, much like any mindfulness work is becoming aware, increasing our awareness. And as it relates to our household family ledger or our finances, it's what's actually happening. We need to raise our awareness there as part of this first step. So that's going to mean keeping detailed track of your spending for a set period of time. And, and so there's some questions that can go along with this tracking spending and income um, that kind of gets at the heart of the Kakibo practice. And it centers around these four questions. How much money do I have or earn? How much money do I want to save? How much am I spending? And where can I improve? And oh my goodness, if that just doesn't summarize all the questions that we need to ask and make it sound so approachable and attainable. And I particularly appreciate that last question of where can I improve? I think anytime we are mindful or do some time of reflection and processing, that needs to be one of the questions. Certainly, mm -hmm. what am I doing well? We often don't ask that question either, but also where can I improve? Where is there growth that I want to see? And that's going to help inform the next steps. Yeah. So once you answer these four questions, and these are four questions that you're going to be journaling about at least once a month, I would say probably with every paycheck. So if you're paid weekly, maybe asking these questions weekly. If you're paid twice a month, answering them twice a month, but at least once a month answering these questions. Um, and then track your spending for a month. So instead of making your ideal budget, the perfect budget that you'd love to stick to, the first step is is in Kakibo is just like put the mindfulness into practice. Just become aware of the transactions. So track your transactions for a month on pen and paper. So I would just say find one of those journals that's hiding in your bookcase or your closet that you thought you'd use and haven't used um, and just use that and kind of make a make your own columns. So there are a ton of Kakibo journals, but you don't need to buy something new for this. You can just say, okay, this is the date. This is what I bought. This is how much it was. And then you can start to categorize. So there are four categories in Kakibo. Um, the first is general. Uh, the second is leisure. Third is culture. And fourth is unexpected. Uh, so general, this would be household expenditures like housing, food, transportation. It's the things that you sometimes neglect writing down as your transactions because you're like, oh, I'm not impulse spending on gas. You know, I'm not impulse spending on the internet. But it still is required to write it down and put it in the transactions because you still want to be mindful about it. Because the more you write something down, like maybe you're not impulse spending on gas, but the more you write it down, the more you realize you're spending on it. And you you start to give your spell, yourself space to see, okay, I, I'm, I'm doing this out of necessity, but how can I get 
creative with this expense. Maybe there's something I can do to get a little creative here. So you still want to write these things down. Uh, So the next is leisure. Um, So all the things like Netflix, shopping, general merchandise, gifts, all of these things. And and sometimes, so you'll see these four expenses or these four categories kind of different throughout from person to person. Some people say that general is um, essential or necessary necessities where leisure is like non-essential. I personally like the general and the leisure, but I also like Necess- like essential and non-essential because then you can when you, as you start to get your values in order and find out what you really love then you can say something that might be leisure can become like essential can can kind of get bumped up so it's up to you then we've got culture uh, which is things that enrich your life so um, a subscription to a newspaper or magazine or a professional organization maybe it's a haircut. They're, they're also, they say, considered non-essentials, but just a little bit more, I don't know, culture. You get to decide what's culture for you. Uh, and then fourth is unexpected. So this is stuff that comes up, unexpected, that we all need to pay for. It's those things that you that happen and you're like, oh, I bust my budget. I'm, I suck at budgeting. No, they're just unexpected costs. And I love that this method specifically accounts for them. So Hmm. when you're starting out, you track your transactions, you say what it is, how much it was, and then what category it falls in. Yeah. And then from there, once you've done those, the the work of those steps, it's then setting your goals. Once you have increased your awareness, you've divided your spending into different categories, then allowing that to help inform What do you want to see for your money over the course of the next month, the next few months, the next year, few years? What do you want to achieve with your money? What's your timeline for achieving those goals? What big and small goals do you have? So setting those things for each of the categories, general, leisure, culture, unexpected. And so sure, that then would become like a quote unquote budget or how you would approach your household family ledger with what you want to see your spending look like. So again, it is that shift from what am I spending on versus what am I saving on, although both will be happening. Saving will be happening in certain categories as well as spending. Mm -hmm. And and then continuing to track your spending and assess how you're doing. How does it line with your goals, with your values, with what you said you wanted to do? And then I like how the article moves into these questions that we can ask before we spend. So a lot of this can be helpful, particularly in, in avoiding impulse spending, but just in general, before we spend asking, do I actually need this? Will it be useful? And does it get me excited? Do I have space for this? Will it have a place to live in my home or in my life? Do I do I actually have room for it? Based on my current financial situation, can I actually afford this? How do I feel about buying this? So that's a true mindfulness practice, getting in touch with your thoughts and emotions. What is it stirring in you? Even viscerally inside your body, what are you noticing is happening for you when you think about purchasing this? A lot of times for me, I've talked about this in previous episodes, if I get kind of like sweaty or my heart's racing before purchasing something, that's usually an indicator for me that I'm probably not comfortable doing it right at that moment. Maybe I need to think about it more or it is an impulse purchase. So just paying attention to what's happening inside you. And then finally, another question we can ask is what is my general emotional state today? So kind of even more broad, where am I at checking in with myself emotionally? Is this maybe a coping mechanism? Do I want to give myself more of a space or a pause before I engage in this purchase? So really great check-in questions. And that circling back to pen and paper, could even be something we carry around with us. Although that could be typed into your phone as well. Kind of my my checklist of questions I ask myself before purchasing. So when you're out and about pulling out those questions and kind of running through the list or asking yourself whatever questions feel most relevant to help inform that decision. So you make sure that you are making a good a good choice for yourself. Yeah. I love these questions because something we've always said is is you can know your values and what you really want in life. And that helps with baking 
bigger financial decisions. But when it comes down to you and Target, those big goals are not going to necessarily be enough to motivate you to not choose instant gratification. But pausing will. And pausing and asking these questions just adds another layer to the boundaries, to the walls between you and an impulse purchase. So yeah, I, I read another version of the first one, which is, do I actually need this? Someone was like, can I live without this? Which I also thought was a good uh, reframe of it. Um, And then just being like, do I have space for it? Can I afford this? Thinking about not just the current financial situation, but like also the goals as well. Like, can I afford this and still be on track to my goals? Um, And then just taking, like we, we say this a lot, is being aware of your emotional state and what you did beforehand, what happened beforehand. Like, are you here? Are you shopping to celebrate something? And that's why you're you're wanting to buy this? Are you here to avoid some kind of emotion that you should be dealing with? So these are amazing questions. And I I feel like there should be like a phone background with these questions on it. Mm -hmm. And I may make one. I don't want to make any promises, but I kind of want to make one because this is definitely worth it. Or like an audiogram where you just play it back to yourself. Do you have space for this? Where are you going to put it? Do you need it? Do you want it? How are you feeling? (laughs) What happened in your life today? (laughs) And you can pick... You Jill will do one and I will do one and you can pick (laughs) whose you want. (laughs) Who do you want questioning your purchase decisions? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's great. They also say waiting on purchasing something for 24 hours is just like an additional recommendation. Mm. But I mean, we love that. Yeah. Patience is a virtue. Always. Always. That's kind of like the general like way to do Kakibo. It's very simple. And mm. that's something else that I love about it. It's just so simple. It's the four questions categorize your spending into four categories. And then in practice, which very few budgeting methods actually have, I would say no other budgeting method has actual implementation. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the structure of the ledger, then there's implementation guidelines for following the plan. Well, and I feel very affirmed in this because I am cla- I'm pen and paper. I still do write all my transactions down. I just I love it. And I think mm-hmm. it, some of it is for this reason. It while that could sound like a lot of work to some people, to me it feels simple. Just mm-hmm. pen and paper, aware of what I'm doing, informing my decisions upcoming, aligning it with my goals. It feels so cathartic to me. I realize that's not going to be everybody's situation and they may not write down every transaction every single month. But for me, this is essentially what I have been doing already. So I'm glad to have a term for it. I know. I feel the same way. Like I, We've been talking about this stuff for years and to actually have a name for it and this just really simple, like beautiful... We have to, we've said the word elegant several times in this episode, but I really feel that's... Yeah, I, I love it. It's so simple. It's so elegant and I'm already obsessed. Uh, so, but let's move on to our next article. La NFL nos apasiona a todos en el mundo y en Trendzone te acompañamos a vivir la semana a semana con el mejor análisis en español. Y este día para toda la raza aquí de Trendzone es importante. Martín del Palacio, Rolando Cantú, Carlos Mauricio Ramírez y Mariano Sinito te esperan para poner bajo la lupa los resultados más reveladores de cada semana. Las historias que están dominando el tema de conversación y los personajes que están en el spotlight. Encontrar la forma de ganar allí es una virtud. Los temas más trendy de la semana NFL viven aquí con nuestros expertos que aunque alejados geográficamente están unidos por la buena vibra, la camaradería y su gran conocimiento sobre la mejor liga del mundo. Ahora está diciendo que Purdy es Kurt Warner y mejor que Mahomes. Está, pero total, enloqueció. Refiérete con más respeto al MVP de la liga, a Brock Purdy. Los candentes debates cierran siempre con risas, bromas y pláticas entre amigos. Está queriendo decir que él llegó y era Joe Gordo y lo pusieron Joe Flacco. Sí, Joe Flacco. Lo, 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 lo que seguro no es es Joe Burro. Listen to Trend Zone on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. How do you feel about biscuits? Hi. 
I'm Akila Hughes, and I'm so excited about my new podcast, Rebel Spirit, where I head back to my hometown in Kentucky and try to convince my high school to change their racist mascot, the Rebels, into something everyone in the South loves, the Biscuits. I was a lady rebel. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I mean, the Boone County Rebels will stay the Boone County Rebels, but the image of the It's right here in black and white in print. A lion. <laughs> An individual that came to the school saying that God sent him to talk to me about the mascot switch is a leader. You choose hills that you want to die on. Why would we want to be the losing team? Like, right. that just, I just take all the other stuff out of home. Segregation academies, uh, when the civil rights uh, said that we need to integrate public schools, these charter schools were exempt from that. Bigger than a flag or mascot. You have to be ready for serious backlash. Listen to Rebel Spirit on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Do you ever wonder where your favorite foods come from? Like, what's the history behind bacon-wrapped hot dogs? Hi, I'm Eva Longoria. Hi, I'm Maite Gomez Rejon. Our podcast, Hungry for History, is back. Season two. Season two. (laughs) Are we recording? Are we good? Oh, we pushed record, right? Okay. And this season, we're taking an even bigger bite out of the most delicious food and its history. Saying that mm. the most popular cocktail is the margarita, followed by the mojito from Cuba oh. and the piña colada from Puerto Rico. Oh. So also, all of these we Latin have We thank Latin culture. There's a mention of blood sausage in Homer's Odyssey that dates back to the 9th century B.C. B.C.? I didn't realize how old the hot dog was. Listen to Hungry for History as part of the My Cultura Podcast Network, available on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. In a galaxy far, far away. No, babe, that's taken. We're in our own world, remember? Right. In our own world, we're two space cadets and totally normal humans. Sure, totally normal humans. Embark on a journey across the stars discovering the wonders of the universe one episode at a time. We'll talk about life, love, laughter, and why you should never argue with your co-pilot. Especially when she's always right. Right. And if we hit turbulence, just blame it on Mercury retrograde. Or Emily's questionable space piloting skills. Hey, join us on In Our Own World for cosmic conversations, stellar laughs, and super corny dad jokes. Listen to In Our Own World as a part of the My Cultura Podcast Network, available on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't worry, we promise to avoid any black holes. Most of the time. Senora Sex Ed is not your mommy's sex talk. This show is La Platica like you've never heard it before. We're breaking the stigma and silence around sex and sexuality in Latinx communities. This podcast is an intergenerational conversation between Latinas from Gen X to Gen Z. We're covering everything from body image to representation in film and television. We even interview iconic Latinas like Puerto Rican actress Ana Ortiz. I felt in control of my own physical body and my own self. I was on birth control. I had sort of had my first sexual experience. If you're in your senora era or know someone who is, then this is the show for you. We're your hosts, Diosa and Mala, and you might recognize us from our flagship podcast, Locatora Radio. We're so excited for you to hear our brand new podcast, Senora Sex Ed. Listen to Senora Sex Ed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. It's from Refinery29, and it's Learn About Kakibo, the Japanese art of saving money. So a lot of the same things highlighted in this article as the previous one, but this takes a specific look at what are the things we need to know about Kakibo in order to engage with it. So yes, it does sound simple. Sitting down at the start of each month and making a plan for how we're going to spend and having categories and awareness of our goals. It's so beautiful. And what else do we need to know? And so first off the bat is this shifting of focus. Jen, you and I have already mentioned this, but just to highlight it one more time, it really is looking a lot at the spending aspect of 
our finances rather than the saving. Again, both will happen, but clearly we're looking a lot more at our spending decisions, the things that we're acquiring, where our money is going. And oftentimes that can feel more approachable than when we're just talking about saving. If we're using the words saving and we can't and we can't have and we need to restrict, then it can feel like a chore versus becoming more what we can do, what we can have, what we can afford. How are we going to do that? I like how this article frames this, that it becomes a much more inviting prospect. And it does feel that way of we're all spending money. So here's a method to become more engaged in that and align it more with your values and goals. Yeah, I think in frugality, sometimes we're tricked into thinking that spending is bad and it's how can I spend less? How can I buy less? Which is, yes, we invite that, especially when you are spending on a lot of different things that maybe you don't love. But I think what we want to reframe frugality to be is the emphasis on how do I spend better? Spending is great. Spending is neutral. So how do I just improve my spending instead of shaming yourself for spending on a plethora of different things that actually are neutral. They're not bad to spend on. Even if somebody's trying to tell you that you shouldn't be spending money on them, the things itself are not bad. And so let's lift the shame off of what we're spending on and focus on how do we spend better. I can't be nodding harder right now. <laughs> We are not recording video on this one, but I'm giving myself whiplash for how hard I'm (laughs) nodding at everything you're saying. It's it's a nodding yes, not a no. Thank you. Not shaking my head. I'm nodding it. (laughs) Um, So the next is, and I, I think all these are like mindset shifts. So if you make these mindset shifts, you'll have a much better time implementing Kakibo. Um, So the second shift is that writing things down will help. Uh, So keeping Kakibo is all about recording your spending. But when we do it, we just plug numbers in on a spreadsheet or we sign up for Mint and they just automatically plug transactions in. It takes away the core reason to record your transactions. Putting pen to paper is a fundamental part of this practice. And it's one of the reasons when people are like, what's your favorite budgeting app? And I still don't have one because it just depends on where you're at on the journey. When you are very early in the journey, and I would say everyone can benefit from this at some point, whether you've, you're you just starting out or you've been doing it for a while, like recording your transactions manually is essential to, fig- to, to discover and learn about your relationship when you with money, it's essential. And so typically I would just recommend an app where you could um, do things manually or a budget spreadsheet where you could input things manually. But I love this concept of actual like physical pen to paper because it forces you like to slow down. Like we're all so busy. And so to go to the grocery store and have to pause like before you put the groceries in the car and write down the transaction and the amount and the category like i it's so it's not inconvenient but it's not the most convenient mm-hmm. like it's not going it's not going out of the way to like seven different grocery stores to get the lowest price on everything but it's also not just swiping your card and being totally disconnected from the bill like it's that it's that radical middle mm. Yes. The the next thing that is worth noting about this method is that we're going to need to be honest about our musts and our wants. I like how the article describes that the Kipo method is about decluttering your finances. And we've described mm. the simplicity and the elegance of that. So this definitely goes hand in hand with, yes, de- decluttering our finances. And if if you followed all the other steps, then you know how much money's coming in, how much money's going out. And so now it's time to figure out what are you going to do with the rest, assuming that there is a little bit of margin left over from the the essential where do I want that money to go? What are what are my musts? What are my wants? And particularly in the category of wants, how do I make sure that the money is going to the most important 
of my wants and not frivolously getting spent who knows where and being left at the end of the month kind of disappointed in what we see. And so, of course, then it's going to inform what shifts need to be made so that the spending really can align with my true wants. Yeah. And I think this is where those questions, the monthly or bi-monthly questions really come into play because that question on how can I improve, it tells you more, it allows you to think more about, okay, what are the things that I value that may be uh, non-essentials for somebody else, but are essential for me? And what are my actual non-essentials? Because you can want anything, but you probably don't want everything. Mm -hmm. That's very unlikely. Marketing definitely tells us we should want everything. But if you look at it over the course of months and years, and even the things you wanted like a year or two or three ago can and should be different than what you want now. And so it also gives you the time to reflect on, okay, are the things that were like essential to me then still essential to me now? The fourth is going to kind of hurt some of our hearts. It's going to be uncomfortable for some of us, but it's that cash is better than card. And psychologically, cash is better than card. Yes. For travel reward points and cash back, cards, love. But And I say this to people, again, if you're very new to the journey, if you are just starting out, cash is almost essential. Like to just do a, a at least a month, two months, three months with cash will really make a big difference in the speed to which you kind of get in control of your relationship with money. It will really speed it up. After the first few months, I would say once you've built a habit of mindfulness with your money, you can go back to card. It is a very for me, inconvenient way to live. I know a lot of others agree. So I do prefer card, but it is so easy. Swipe your card and you have no clue how much you just spent on your card. So yeah, tying that pen and paper recording with the cash, really like Mm -hmm. going off the deep end, intense method to like uh, be a catalyst to getting your relationship with money kind of solidified. See, now for me, I I agree and disagree. I think on the one hand, it is a good practice. And like you're saying, Jen, especially when just starting out, for me, I feel as though cash is not traceable. So oftentimes when I spend cash on it, it feels like I'm hardly spending because it's not going to show up in a paper statement. I'm not going to see it later. Like I am very aware of what I spent on the card because there's a record. There's a paper trail more than just my receipt. And I'll often spend cash when I want it to feel like, oh, this doesn't even count. There's no record. It's not traceable. So that, and maybe that's just like a a poor mindset I've adopted, but that's how it feels for me. Like Mm -hmm. I'm using cash when like, I don't even have to think about that purchase. Yeah. It is the first time I've heard somebody say that, but I'm sure you can't be alone. And I'm (laughs) not going to judge anybody for not going to cash because I couldn't, I wouldn't. And I think with the recording, like with the pen and paper recording, it does add that mindfulness. So Mm -hmm. I think maybe you wouldn't, you like, wouldn't need to stay on cash as long as somebody who was using an app to track their budget. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I really think it does add that relationship to the spending that a, like a fintech app would not. So I'm not going to judge anyone for not doing the cash envelopes. (laughs) Thanks. I appreciate you withholding your judgment from me. So the (laughs) final 
thing on here to be aware of number five is that you should finish the month by reflecting on your progress. And I so appreciate how this is coming full circle and it is congruent with mindfulness practices, with the simplicity of it, but also the connectivity of it, that we're not just setting goals and tracking our spending. We're also looking back and reflecting because oftentimes that's where the true understanding, learning shifts happen is when we give ourselves space to reflect. So once we've set the month and we've done the month, This is crucial to then pause and reflect. How did that go? What went well? What do I want to see go differently before we set what the next month is going to be? We've got to give ourselves that space and time to look back and learn from what just happened. Yeah. You know what else we can use to learn what has happened? Mm, look back and reflect before we move forward. We really should create a compilation of the, the bill, bill of the, of the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, Jen and Jill. My name is Em and I'm calling from Quebec, Canada. And I wanted to submit my Bill of the Week. So my bill is my new heating and air conditioning device that has been installed last week. I've been working from home for the last uh, two years and it was getting really hot in the summer. So I was looking forward for this home improvement. Uh, also knowing that it will be increasing the value of my house. The, the total bill was $7,000. So it was quite high. But uh, after getting some information, I knew that I was el- eligible for different grants. So I will be getting back a little bit more than $3,000 uh, on grants from the government. And I uh, will also be saving about $20 per month on my heating bill during the winter. So the, the system will be paid by itself quite quickly. And the value that it adds to my house, if I ever decide to sell it, will be way more than what I've paid for. So I'm really happy with that. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Amazing, M. Thank you so much for calling in from Quebec and sharing this amazing bill. It's so practical. And that is such a massive household upgrade that can often be one of those things like, oh, it's so much money to spend on something that you don't totally notice, although heating and cooling is really essential. (laughs) Um, But it's not something we typically want to drop that amount of money on. But it sounds like you are planful and, and were able to spend the money, but then also put in the time, energy, and effort to do the research and apply for these grants. Getting money back is saving you 40% on Mm -hmm. this massive home upgrade. And then like you're saying, what it's going to save you monthly, what the value add that it is to your home. What an amazing bill. I'm so happy for you that this is installed and working in your house. You're getting to enjoy it and you just feel really good about this purchase you've made. Well done. Yeah. Um, Good job. I think it teaches everyone always check for rebates and grants um, from your city and state before you make big home improvements because there's always something like in Pinellas you can get a free toilet for your house like everyone gets a free toilet like there's a very (laughs) minimum standard you need to meet to get a free toilet so like there's it's always worth looking for those grants. You're making and us sound so weird. We're just giving out toilets down here. <laughs> Every, our toilet for everyone. Yeah. It's, we we all get excited about it. Right. So <laughs> yeah, if you want to submit your bill of the week, visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill to leave us a bill. Maybe you got a free toilet. We'd love to hear about it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
NFL nos apasiona a todos en el mundo y en Trendzone te acompañamos a vivir la semana a semana con el mejor análisis en español. Y este día para todas las razas aquí de Trendzone es importante. Martín del Palacio, Rolando Cantú, Carlos Mauricio Ramírez y Mariano Cinito te esperan para poner bajo la lupa los resultados más reveladores de cada semana. Las historias que están dominando el tema de conversación y los personajes que están en el spotlight. Encontrar la forma de ganar allí es una virtud. Los temas más trendy de la semana NFL viven aquí, con nuestros expertos que, aunque alejados geográficamente, están unidos por la buena vibra, la camaradería y su gran conocimiento sobre la mejor liga del mundo. Ahora está diciendo que Purdy es Kurt Warner y mejor que Mahomes. Está, pero total, en lo que sí. Refiérete con más respeto al MVP de la liga, a Brock Purdy. Los candentes debates cierran siempre con risas, bromas y pláticas entre amigos. Está queriendo decir que él llegó y era Joe Gordo y lo pusieron Joe Flacco. Sí, Joe Flacco. Lo, lo que seguro no es, es Joe Burro. Listen to Trend Zone on the iHeartRadio Radio App, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. In a galaxy far, far away. No, babe, that's taken. We're in our own world, remember? Right. In our own world, we're two space cadets. And totally normal humans. Sure, totally normal humans. Embark on a journey across the stars, discovering the wonders of the universe one episode at a time. We'll talk about life, love, laughter, and why you should never argue with your co-pilot. Especially when she's always right. Right. And if we hit turbulence, just blame it on Mercury Retrograde. Or Emily's questionable space piloting skills. Hey, join us on In Our Own World for cosmic conversations, stellar laughs, and super corny dad jokes. Listen to In Our Own World as a part of the My Cultura Podcast Network, available on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't worry, we promise to avoid any black holes. Most of the time. I felt too seen. <laughs> um, dragged. Uh... I'm NK, and this is Basket Case. So I basically had what back in the day they would call a nervous breakdown. I was crying, and I was inconsolable. It was just very big sudden swaps of different meds. What is wrong with me? Oh, look at you giving me therapy, girl. Finally, a show for the mentally ill girlies. On Basket Case, I talk to people about what happens when what we call mental health is shaped by the conditions of the world we live in. Because if you haven't noticed, we are experiencing some kind of f conditions that are pretty hard to live with. But if you struggle to cope, the society that created the conditions in the first place will tell you there's something wrong with you. And it will call you a basket case. Listen to Basket Case every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Do you ever wonder where your favorite foods come from? Like what's the history behind bacon wrapped hot dogs? Hi, I'm Eva Longoria. Hi, I'm Maite Gomez Rejon. Our podcast, Hungry for History, is back. Season two. Season two. <laughs> Are we recording? Are we good? Oh, oh we pushed record, right? <laughs> okay. And this season, we're taking an even bigger bite out of the most delicious food and its history. Saying that mm. the most popular cocktail is the margarita, followed by the mojito from Cuba oh. and the piña colada from Puerto Rico. Oh. So awesome. all of these we have we thank Latin culture. There's a mention of blood sausage in Homer's Odyssey that dates back to the 9th century BC. BC? I didn't realize how old the hot dog was. Listen to Hungry for History as part of the My Cultura Podcast Network, available on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everyone. It's me, Katie Couric. If you follow me on social media, you know I love to cook or at least try, especially alongside some of my favorite chefs and foodies like Benny Blanco, Jake Cohen, Lighty Hoyk, Allison Roman. And of course, Ina Garten and Martha Stewart. So I started a free newsletter called Good Taste that comes out every Thursday. And it's serving up recipes that will make your mouth water. Think a candied bacon Bloody Mary, tacos with cabbage slaw, curry cauliflower with almonds and mint, and cherry slab pie with vanilla ice cream to top it all off. I mean, yum, I'm getting hungry. But if you're not sold yet, We also have kitchen tips, like a foolproof way to grill the perfect burger, and must-have products like the best cast iron skillet to feel like a chef in your own kitchen. All you need to do is sign up at katiecouric.com slash good taste. That's K-A-T-I-E-C-O-U-R-I-C dot com slash good taste. I promise your taste buds will be happy you did. 
And now it's time for Lightning Round. Lightning round. <clears throat> so we are talking about spending intentionally, um, shifting our focus to how can I spend better? So we want to know, inquiring minds want to know, how do you feel about your intentionality towards your spending in this season? Because it is seasonal. Mm. Once you achieve intentional spending, it's not like you're there forever. Mm -hmm. It's definitely seasonal. And so let's be honest and transparent and vulnerable Mm. about our seasons. Mm -hmm. Jill? (laughs) I was going to say, so do you want to go first? You want to be honest, transparent, (laughs) and vulnerable? All right. So I am feeling really great, actually. You caught me in a good season. And you know, I'll be honest with you. There's times when I am not crushing it, but right now (laughs) feels really great. And, and I'll tell you why I have been doing a ton of cooking at home and making meal plans and it has been going so well. Now, part of that is because we are on a four week stretch where we have no travel plans and no guests. That has not happened in the last two years, at least, where we haven't had guests or travel plans for that amount of time. So part of it is my ability to really get into a rhythm and be at home and cook for us. And so that is one of the discretionary categories, discretionary spending categories that can get out of hand for us. So me being on top of it has, yeah, it's been intentional and it has also really saved us a lot of money over these last few weeks, which has allowed us to then put some some additional money towards the renovations that, by the way, you might be able to hear in the background if you hear any power tools. <laughs> it's happening. No, um, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> renovations are happening. If you've been listening to this for a long time, you can celebrate with me. I'm not going to hinder that progress because I need... Don't you dare. I, I need that kitchen Mm -hmm. in some real ways. So I'm feeling like really, really great about it. I continue to not only do I keep a pen and paper account of all of my transactions, I also back in June, I made a new spreadsheet that I am so stoked about. It's a more complicated spreadsheet, but it gets my finances to a more... Uh, detailed measure that Hmm. is really cool for me and has a few more categories of sinking funds that has been helpful for me because I'm realizing I've got a couple of things that I want to be saving for that I just wasn't doing when I didn't have it allocated to different sinking funds. So I've done a couple of these like minor shifts recently that have really brought my budget, my finances together in in a nice way. And I appreciate what you're saying there, Jen, of for this season, I don't think I'm going to need to have such a tight hold on the money in and out in, you know, a year from now, but because we're going so hard at renovations and cash flowing them, I'm trying to be really mindful, really intentional in some of these different areas. And these are the things that have helped. So right now, I I feel great. I feel on top of the world with it. Mm -hmm. What about Mm -hmm. you? Well, I wanted you to go first because mine is a bit of the opposite. Mm. So, (laughs) and it's not, uh, so like it's, I've been intentional. So it hasn't been like negative spending, but it has been increased spending. So it has been this like interesting dichotomy. I don't know if that's the right word, but it, we are recording this at the end of summer. And uh, so I have allowed myself this summer kind of to be freer with my time. This is a slower season in the personal finance world. Nobody, not as many people care about their money over the summer. <laughs> After summer, I just want to go do. on vacation. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, so it's been light and I've been allowing myself to rest and allowing myself to rest has meant um, going out with friends a little bit more. So I have been spending more. And also July was the first month that we paid a mortgage on the new house. So now we have two mortgages instead of one. And we still have not... We've only rented out one um, of the two r- rental, you know, 
areas. <laughs> so this month will involve a tightening just because, A, we need to focus on renovating the rental half of our house and uh, B, because we have we have saved and so that money is not coming the money for that mortgage is not coming out of our month to month it's coming out of our savings but it's still something that i want to be mindful of and we're entering back into our quote unquote busier season and so i will um allow myself to say no more to going out and uh finding alternatives for things that you know, activities that I would normally spend money on and and kind of suggesting alternative activities. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I did give myself space to rest and spend over the summer. And now heading into fall, being a lot more aware. And so I think I'm going to be trying this Kakibo for the fall. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have not personally like tried it. And Just learning about it for this episode has made me like think, okay, I actually really need this because even though I am frugal and I care about my money, some seasons just get you out of your groove. Maybe not even a bad way, but they just get you out of your groove and it's time to reset and rethink heading into the next season. Like, what is essential for me? What is non-essential, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, I think... In all of it, what I am hearing you say is there it, there are degrees of intentionality. Maybe your t- the reins, how tightly the reins are on your spending might have shifted, but you have given yourself that space intentionally to spend this summer. So it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like it's lacking intentionality. It just might be lacking the amount of boundaries that you are going to be putting around it in the fall because of the different goals. So yeah, each yeah. season requires different boundaries and maybe a tighter grip or a looser grip on our finances. Yeah, I did. I went out to brunch with friends two days in a row. And on after the second one, I, t- I turned to my friend. I was like, we can't do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. I think agreed. I saw you yeah. that night. You're like, I went out to brunch. Yeah. I was like, great. You're like, two days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> It was great and fun, and but I was like, we got to get this together. <laughs> we got to get it together. Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. Well, Jen, did you end up doing two brunches in a row? No. <laughs> I honored my, uh, my voice, and I did not do that level of brunch again you, i think maybe that's the last time i did do brunch maybe yes. i think i can't recall you went on a brunch bender and now it's over <laughs> yeah <laughs> i got it all out of my system amazing well we're back we hope that that episode felt as timeless to you as it did to us and that you've got some takeaways or new ways to look at managing your money that will be helpful for you yeah i i love we, I mean, we always love the idea of looking at your purchases objectively uh, and kind of asking questions about them. And if you're afraid of doing this, then we would just encourage you to look at your spending from a place of curiosity. Start asking yourself questions uh, that get to the root of the purchase and not in a defensive way. Take out the why. The why why questions can be very informative, but just like I was saying with language at the top of the episode, sometimes whys can put us on the defensive and it's just a, a way to get us out of the habit of being judgmental about ourselves. So let's take why off the table for a little bit. Let's ask ourselves different questions so that we can look at the spending journal with more objectivity, more neutrality, so that we can really learn about ourselves, our spending, and use that information to improve. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you for listening. And thank you for leaving kind reviews. We especially love this one from Kitty Poo, 
eight eight. <laughs> happy pod, happy gal. <laughs> Kitty Poo says. This show has been one of my relaxing, chill-out pods for a long time. I can always rely on a positive attitude from both Jen and Jill, and they keep it very fun. It also has the added bonus of some helpful tips about living life in an ethical and sustainable way, so I get to feel a little productive while I listen. I've probably listened to about 80 to 90% of the episodes, and I can tell you there's not one I've heard that's been a bummer. It's all positive. Uh She's just keep keeping going with the eight eight eight. Thank eight. you. She's listening to eighty to ninety. She's listening to eight 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 of Kitty our episodes. Poo. Eight 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 eight. Amazing. Thanks, Kitty Boo, for that lovely review. We're so glad that we're bringing the positivity to you. If anybody else listening has nice things to say and helpful things for other potential podcast listeners of the Frugal Friends to kind of know what to expect, what this podcast is about. Those are the ways that reviews can be helpful to us. So please, wherever you're listening to us, leave us a review. Uh, It really helps us. It helps other people. You just be helpful today. And make your name on it just a a lot of random numbers and letters and because we will read it. And it is a way that you can make podcasting more difficult than it already is for us. It can be your good deed for the day. And then you can do whatever else you want after that because you've done a good deed. There you go. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. Okay, Jen. Jill. I have... I'm probably going to, I'm I'm essentially organically starting a series over here of my Florida experiences. <laughs> yes. Like four I years. live for this series. <laughs> this is one I could binge. I look forward to it every week. We are four years into living in Florida and all of a sudden it feels like we're, we're, we're getting the real deal lately. Just back to back Florida stuff happening. Well, happening feel, to us. I feel like the first two or three years you were here, Florida was on a different vibe. It was just a different vibe. <laughs> and now Florida is florida again. Yeah. It's back. She yeah. she back better. Yeah. Uh, and most of it has to do with other living creatures that are not humans. <laughs> if you've heard... Oh, yeah, she's back. <laughs> if you've heard my other series, <laughs> the other installments in this <laughs> series, it's been a cockroach in my pants. It's been a massive spider in my clean laundry. And now what I have for you, friends, is we got roosters. Or at least I think you have a rooster. There's a rooster. It would be bad if you had more than one rooster because then you would have a different problem. Yeah, I was driving so through the alley the other day and there were just chickens, just chickens in the alley running loose. Free range. Free range. They they would call that. Yes. They're highly sought after, except for in my alley. And I don't know who they belong to, but I'm just like, oh, fun. Just wild chickens, I suppose. Until that night, in what felt like the very middle of the night, there was a rooster cocking. Where? Cock-a-doodling. Where the women are, the men will come. Yeah. And that felt abrasive and uncalled for because chickens are more than welcome Without a rooster, they bring edible eggs. With a rooster, you never know what's going to happen. They just bring their voice and they think their voice is so important that it has to, they have to say what they've got to say at two o'clock in the morning and everyone has to hear it. We are two miles from downtown. I don't think it's allowed to, to have a rooster here. I think chickens, you could have up to four chickens, but not roosters. And yet here we are. I don't know who has them. Here's the thing. Somebody probably had them. They told them to get rid of them. And they just let them loose. And now here they are. But now I'm so shocked because we do. So we live right on a nature preserve. And there are foxes and coyotes in the nature preserve. And I would have imagined that they would have been taken. That's probably why they brought their, that's why they brought them here. Right. But mm-hmm. th- three or four days in a row now, we've been on a farm. 
<laughs> and we've been getting up to milk the cows before the crack of dawn. Uh, and it's wild. And it's happening. And they're still alive and well. Well, good for them. Good yeah, for but them. I'm going to go on a on a bit of a scavenger hunt today to try to figure out where these animals are. If they are at, on someone's property or if they're just wild in the park. I don't know. If they're wild in the park, I might become a chicken mom. I've already done sourdough. Cool. I I will not I will not be having a rooster though. That's no. not going to happen. Nobody should do that. It's fine. You just let him let him live in the preserve and what happens to him what happens to him. <laughs> We'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> Stay tuned for my Florida Stay, adventures. Stay tuned. Did you know Bill Penny Toyota is Alabama's number one volume Toyota dealer? We have hundreds of your favorite Toyotas for sale. Over 300 right here on our lot in Huntsville. We have tons of Camrys, a whole lot of RAV4s, and hundreds more of your favorite new Toyotas. That's how we do it at Alabama's number one volume Toyota dealer. Get to know us today at Bill Penny Toyota, Alabama's number one volume Toyota dealer. Online at BillPennyToyota.com. Numbers are one is based on Toyota new retail sales of Alabama's 2021 first Southeast Toyota dealer. Distributor, see dealer for details. How do you feel about biscuits? Hi, I'm Akila Hughes, and I'm so excited about my new podcast, Rebel Spirit, where I head back to my hometown in Kentucky and try to convince my high school to change their racist mascot, the Rebels, into something everyone in the South loves, the biscuits. I was a lady rebel. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> it's right here in black and white and print. So they lie. bigger than a flag or mascot. Listen to Rebel Spirit on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I am Lacey Lamar. And I'm also Lacey Lamar. Just kidding. I'm Amber Ruffin. Okay, everybody, we have exciting news to share. We're back with season two of the Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber show on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network. This season, we make new friends, deep dive into my steamy DMs, answer your listener questions, and more. The more is punch each other. Listen to the Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber show on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Just listen, okay? Or Lacey gets it. Do it. Hi, everyone. It's me, Katie Couric. You know, if you've been following me on social media, you know I love to cook, or at least try, especially alongside some of my favorite chefs and foodies like Benny Blanco, Jake Cohen, Lighty Hoyk, Allison Roman, and Ina Garten. So I started a free newsletter called Good Taste to share recipes, tips, and kitchen must-haves. Just sign up at katiecouric.com slash good taste. That's K-A-T-I-E-C-O-U-R-I-C dot com slash good taste. I promise your taste buds will be happy you did. Senora Sex Ed is not your mommy's sex talk. This show is La Platica like you've never heard it before. We're breaking the stigma and silence around sex and sexuality in Latinx communities. This podcast is an intergenerational conversation between Latinas from Gen X to Gen Z. We're your hosts, Diosa and Mala. You might recognize us from our first show, Locatora Radio. Listen to Senora Sex Ed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 